ready, Clint? Whenever you're ready. Everyone good? Okay. Um, uh, got a great opportunity tomorrow playing a really good Iowa team. <clears throat> um, obviously, it was a good win for us on Saturday. Thought we played much better, played the right way. I thought we had really good, you know, played much better offense, did some good things, got to continue to get better and continue to, uh, to play the right way. Uh, but got a great opportunity on Tuesday, like I said, against a really good Iowa basketball team. Um, Coach McCaffrey, you know, one of the best coaches um, in the game and, um, <clears throat> and has been there a long time and has been extremely successful. So, um, uh, and, um, uh, and they're obviously one of the best programs in the Big Ten and, and nationally over a, over a long you know, period of time over these, you know, over the years since he's been at Iowa. Um, uh, so we'll have to play really well. We'll have to be really good. We've got to be, we got to play really sharp, both sides of the ball. And, um, and, and we'll have to play the right way to give, our, to give ourselves a chance and opportunity to, to, to win the game. A um, couple connections to Iowa. Um, when I was at the University of Arizona, I played and worked for Coach Lute Olson, uh, who was at Iowa for a long time, and um, as was the, uh, uh, the associate coach at University of Arizona, Jim Rosbro. Um, they both were there at, at, at Iowa for a long time, went to 1980 Final Four. If you ask Coach Olson, God rest his soul, or Coach Jim Rosborough, um, they'll both tell you the, the maybe one of the greatest guards ever and unfortunately got injured. And they would tell you Magic Johnson at the time would say the same thing, but he got hurt with a knee injury. It was Ronnie Lester back in 1980. And um, um, just, uh, but um, so there's, I, you know, it'll, uh, I know Coach Olson went from Iowa to, to Arizona. So, um, um, but anyway, that, that's a little connection with Iowa there. But, uh, but looking forward to playing um, in the ACC Big Ten Challenge. As the news came out today, this will be the last ACC Big Ten Challenge. And um, next year, we'll move into the ACC SEC Challenge. So, um, so this will be the, the ending of the, of the challenge as we know. You talked after the game Saturday about that you have a chance of getting Mecca and uh, Max back. Uh, Moving forward, what do you see for their roles being with the team? Yeah, no. Well, Jordan Mecca unfortunately has had some injuries, and that's you know he's not been able to been available. And then Tristan had, did hurt his knee on Wednesday's game, and um, and uh, wasn't available on Saturday. So, um, but you know the reality of it is is <clears throat> with our team we're going to need everybody, which includes Jordan Mecca, which includes Tristan and our entire group. However, that may work itself out throughout the course of the game. Each game is its own unique opportunity and its own kind of unique, you know, just um, um, deal or thing in a sense that, that you never know how things go. I mean, you look at Javon Franklin, didn't play a lot versus Georgia State, and then you know, and then the next couple games, he's you, you, it's hard to take him off the floor. So I just think that's with our team this year. It could just be game by game in some things. I mean, eventually, you know, maybe settle in a in a normal rotation. But you know, we could be playing seven guys a game, maybe eight, maybe you stretch it to nine, maybe you stretch it to ten. It's just going to be varied based on how things are going, who's playing well, health, and all those other things that go with it. And we're just kind of that's kind of where we are with our group at this point. You guys have had some success in some of these non-conference games against ranked opponents. Obviously, this is probably your hardest non-conference game, looking kind of at the schedule in a totality right now. Um, just kind of how do you approach that? Like, do you talk about, like, what what has worked in the past, why you guys have had some success in those games? And, <clears throat> and also just, I guess, kind of the approach, you know, Fort Myers didn't go how you expected. Um, does that add more pressure into this game for you guys too? Yeah. Well, first of all, thank I know uh, Moose Kelly's Moose Kelly's coming up to um, Iowa, yes. so we appreciate you coming up and covering that. So thank you very much. And then secondly, um, um, yeah, look, I mean, at this point, Kelly, every game is important, um, but we need to get better as a team. You know, again, I, I was not happy in how we played down in Fort Myers. Uh, we just. What, neither game we started well. Neither game we played well. I mean, Utah. I mean, how many free throws did we miss? And we 
there just it didn't go well for us in Fort Myers. And so I think for us as a group, as a unit, uh, look, we want to win every game we play. Obviously, I want to win every time we step on the floor. But but uh, as as in terms of us as a group and unit, we need to continue to get better and get better in the right direction. Continue playing the right way, and and then so. Um, to give yourself a best chance to win, because if we played the right way, which you got to credit to Utah Marquette, you know those those both teams deserve credit. But I just didn't feel, from in my um, shoes or in my position as the head coach, you know we played the right way in those two games. Now maybe I feel differently if we had beaten Utah and made some free throws and we're leaving there one and one and we're sitting here five and one, not four and two. Maybe, but that's just all part of of the deal. And so we had a course correct some things. I, I do believe we're making the right steps and strides on the right path on on trying to be the best team that we can and look we're still young in a lot of areas too I mean we're, we're defensively we'll get better in our in our changing of defenses I mean I've got two transfers playing a whole heck of a lot of minutes and they're trying to figure out the our, our defenses and we got young guys who are still trying to make sure they're caught up with the, the changing of the defenses so um, we'll get better as the year progresses but we just need to continue to see us continue to play the right way and that's if we want to have a shot to beat Iowa on Tuesday, tomorrow night, we're going to have to play the right way. Lance uh, seems to be a pretty solid player uh, on the defensive end. And then I guess when you saw him hit a couple of threes uh, Saturday, that was a big plus for you guys? Well, Lance is, Lance is yeah, no, Lance is very solid. And we need him um, to make shots. And, um, you know when he's open and he had a couple of shots and I thought it was good to have him make a few because he had hit those four in the first game had a little bit of a cold spell there for a few games but good to have him back making those threes so but Lance is Lance is a good basketball player for us um, this is big picture stuff but uh, how how do you feel the ACC Big Ten challenge what's your perspective of it and since it's apparently ending your thought about the the new lineup yeah no, and it's not apparently any. It's over. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a it's a goner. Um, um, uh, so you know, it's been good. You know, obviously, and, and you'd probably know the team better than I do, Randy. Is that you know, this this the ACC Big Ten Challenge was kind of the first of the kind back years. Now you know, there's a bunch of challenges out there and a bunch of things. So maybe a little watered down in a sense. But early on, this was kind of the big deal. Um, and things, you know, this kind of took the lead of that, uh, of the challenge. And so I think there was a real, uh, back in the day when this became um, part of college basketball, it was sort of the, you know, it was a big, it was a, it was a big ordeal for college hoops in early season when you're still trying to compete against football in a sense, you know, for the TV uh, eyes and, and all the numbers with that. Um, now t things have changed because everyone's on television you can catch any game anytime, and there are a lot of different challenges. So it's been great, but um, at this point, um, um, at this point, um, moving forward, I think it'll be exciting that now you're playing in, you know, a new challenge against the SEC. And it sounds like it's going to be during the same time, time period as well as this past challenge. As you go into the stretch here, and obviously you're going to start league play pretty soon as well. Um, what I guess kind of is the offense kind of your main concern right now? Just being more consistent there has that been maybe the biggest issue? So yeah, far? I mean I think we've done a nice job. Look, we've done a nice job taking care of the ball in a lot of areas. I mean, again, last game we had a couple. We had four turnovers the first half. We had ten the second half. Now a couple of those turnovers came late when non non rotation guys were in there, and so maybe that skews it a tad bit, but. Um, we just got to play a clean game, play the right way. And yes, Kelly, offensively is a big thing for us. We need to make sure that we're cleaning that up to give us our best chance for success. How, how do you feel you match up against Iowa? And does, do those matchups affect who you put in the starting lineup? Well, I mean, I think Iowa's, they're multi dimensional. They got a lot of positionless type of players, they've got a lot of really good players. And, um, you know, offensively, the way they play with their cutting and moving and constant, um, you know, player movement and ball movement, they're they're a good team. And and yes, they have a couple, you know, individually individual high high level guys. But th I think overall, they're a really good basketball team. They're one of the fastest playing teams in the country. Transition offense, so obviously, transition defense is going to be a big thing. And um, 
you know, you just we're going to have to be really sound and solid against Iowa in all facets of the game. One thing I noticed from, and I, I didn't watch the last game to be yeah. honest with you yet. Um, just the, it seemed like the cutting on the offense was not there. Like guys were kind of being stagnant, standing around. Was that, is that yeah? You've no, we were. And, and again, I know you were <clears throat> tied up on Saturday, but um, uh, yeah, we, we were much better on Saturday than we were in Fort Myers. We didn't we didn't play well offensively in Fort Myers. Just. And and I don't blame that on the on the players on the student athletes. That's on me. I didn't do a good enough job on that. That's on me. And so I have to course correct that and make sure that you know we really um, get locked in on some things and make the necessary adjustments that need to be changed and or adjusted to make sure that uh, that we're much more cleaner on offense because we had been good and then just for whatever happened we got to Fort Myers and just we weren't real good on that side of the ball at all and, and, and in a couple other areas but but offensively was glaring which led to bad transition defense you know just some things that weren't good within our team and so we've got to you know something that that's you know kind of the heightened alert and heightened alert on on that area the the rebound numbers have been spread around on the team is that a result of the guards going to the basket like you want them to yeah we need to keep rebounding the ball. Um, but unfortunately, we haven't been a great defensive rebounding team with some of the numbers. Like I said, though, but you guys know I've said it many times when the down defenses that we play and as much as we get spread at times, you know, that there is some, that's the vulnerable part. And we're not overly big. When I say, you know, we're not 6'10", 6'8", 6'9", across the front line there. And, our, you know, so for in order for us to achieve success on the defensive end, our guards have to be great defensive rebounders and and um, you know Miles Kelly had six defensive rebounds last ga game uh, Davon's been really you know one of our best defensive guard one of our best defensive rebounds overall and he's a guard and Jalen Moore had six defensive rebounds last game so we just need to keep rebounding by committee thanks, okay thanks everybody yep